What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today we need to talk about some baby Digimon. The official Twitter has gone and revealed a couple of baby Digimon, Digitama, if you will. And there's one that was revealed a couple days ago that, gosh darn it, we've just not gotten around to having a chat about. So I think we can solve all of those problems today. And the weird thing about the ones revealed today is they are, I'm fairly sure, for the very first time, returning Digitama, which is kind of weird. So let's start off with a Digimon that we saw back in the first set, back in New Evolution, Uppermon. The Uppermon has turned from a blue Digimon into a yellow Digimon. How cool. Now what we have here is a level 2 yellow Digimon with an inheritable skill that says, when you're attacking once during your turn, if you've got three or less security, you draw one. Now this of course is very cool, because if you compare it to the Uppermon from New Evolution, that said, when attacking once per turn, if your opponent has any Digimon with no Digivolution sources, you draw one. So I really, really like the fact here that we've still got the whole drawing thing going on like we saw before. Uppermon might not be consistent in terms of typing, but it is consistent in terms of effect. And obviously, your opponent having no Digivolution source is very blue thing, and you giving yourself an advantage when you've got a certain number of security is a very yellow thing. And this is draw power, and it's awesome. And quite frankly, it forms a, a weird kind of combo with Kyopamon here. Because Kyopamon is a level 2 whereby if your security is 5 or more, you draw 1. So if you've got security of 4, you're right in the middle and that's a little bit sad and nobody's got your back. But 5 or more security Kyopamon, 3 or less security Uppermon, and you've got some drawing going on. And drawing's really powerful. Honestly, my only real reservation about Uppermon here is the fact that it's not always going to work. I feel like there's going to be too many games where this only comes out when it's far, far too late. Now, it is worth pointing out we've seen a bunch of recovery and you can draw here before you recover and yay, life is good. But the fact of the matter is that there's going to be big chunks of the game where this does absolutely nothing for you. Now, having said that, Kyoramon was the other one from New Evolution, and it only worked if your security was six or more. But then again, Nyaramon from Ultimate Power, on your opponent's turn, if this Digimon is rested, all your security Digimon get an extra thousand power. So that's likely to be something that actually works the vast majority of the time. Or in the yellow starter deck, we got Tokemon. But that only worked if your opponent's Digimon was destroyed by having its DP lowered to zero. The point I'm making here is that these yellow Digitama tend to actually be really awkward in terms of they don't just work. They make you really have to put the effort in in order to actually get some kind of benefit from using them. I really like this, and I like the draw, and I think it's a really good Digitama, but be aware of the fact that for large chunks of the game, this might not do anything for you. Now, moving into Chibimon, and I had to dig around the internet here to make sure that Chibimon and Debivimon were, in fact, the same Digimon. They are. But shout out to the lovely James Gill on the Facebook page, who not only confirmed that, but also made it clear that it is blue because colorblind people like myself can struggle to differentiate between blue and purple Digimon. So James Gill has gone and done a really kind, nice thing just for the sake of being kind and nice. That is awesome. James is awesome. And what we see here is another Digimon that we've previously seen. Although this one does keep its color, Demi Vimon was blue in ultimate power. And again, being a Digitama, we've got one inheritable skill. When attacking once during your turn, if this Digimon has jamming, you draw one. Now this I love. I absolutely love it. I love drawing here. Drawing is awesome. For what it's worth, Demi Vimon, on your turn, if this Digimon becomes active during your main phase, and we've seen that Blue have a whole bunch of ways of doing that, you gain a thousand power. 
and this is gonna it's gonna be a matchups thing right it's gonna be a meta game call because there are going to be certain matchups where you desperately need 1000 more power to get a key ko and in those matchups the ultimate power demi vmon is going to be huge but then again there are going to be plenty of other matchups where that extra thousand power isn't terribly relevant so in that regard drawing is going to be better i mean the one i point you to here is old force vigemon i think old force vigemon is one of the best cards in the game and tournament results have proven we're, we're kind of right about that but it's got 11,000 power, and 11,000 is what we see from the majority of level 6s. So boosting Old Force Zegemon up to 12,000 power could be what makes it survive a security attack against an 11,000 power security Digimon. Or gives it the option of taking out a resting 11,000 power Digimon. These are going to be choices you have to make based on the decks and the matchups you think you're going to be facing. But the fact of the matter is, draw power is awesome. There is a reason that the new evolution Gabumon has seen so much play. Free cost Digimon, you play it, you draw a card, and, and then you can, you know, just keep evolving up and all of that. Again, it only works when played, not Digivolved. And I think drawing power is awesome. The question, of course, is how often your blue Digimon are going to have jamming. Because if they don't have jamming, it's kind of pointless. And we do have a few options. We've got the Frigimon from New Evolution. That one has jamming. Now, remember, jamming says that you will not be destroyed by Security Digimon. No matter how powerful the Security Digimon is, you will survive the fight against it. So this is actually a really cool thing because it means even though you're attacking with something like Frigimon that's a 4,000 power Digimon and isn't very powerful, you get to draw a card because you've got jamming and you're going to survive because you've got jamming. Now, Frigimon was actually the only option in New Evolution, but we did get a couple in Ultimate Power. We got Vidramon that gives you jamming if you've got a blue tamer. Again, 5,000 power is low, but we don't really care because the fact that we've got jamming really does take away from the low power. And then we've got Aero Vidramon, whereby if you became active during your main phase, you gain jamming. So you make yourself active, then you've got jamming, then you attack, and all of a sudden you get to draw that card as well. It is important to note that this is limited to once during your turn. So, I mean, all force Vigemon, if your blue tamer becomes rested, this becomes active. And you can have multiple blue tamers and make yourself active multiple times during your turn, which would give you a redonkulous draw engine, which is why this is limited to once during your turn. This one I like an awful lot more. I've told you what I feel about drawing extra cards. Drawing extra cards, unless it's going to cause you to deck out, which is a win condition in a Digimon TCG. Drawing extra cards is pretty much always good. And the fact of the matter is, this one is far more easily manipulated. You can play a deck full of blue Digimon that have jamming, and then this is going to work a lot. So frankly, ladies and gentlemen, count me a fan. And then finally, we've got Poromon here. Shout out to the lovely folks over at DigimonCard.dev. You can see the black border, so you know that this scan has been cleaned up and had the English translation and all added by those lovely folks. We are a fan of DigimonCard.dev. Well, at least I am. And frankly, if you're not, well, questions will be asked, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we've got another level 2 Digimon here. That is the whole Digitama thing. And Poromon is a red level 2. When you attack, destroy one of your opponent's Digimon with 1,000 power or less. And I absolutely adore this one. But again, this is a huge metagame call. There are going to be plenty of games, plenty of matchups where this is just a phenomenal card. And there are going to be plenty of matchups where your opponent doesn't have 1,000 power Digimon. And if your opponent doesn't have 1,000 power Digimon, this has an inheritable skill that says... It's not a dramatic pause, the video isn't broken. It doesn't essentially do literally anything. It only works to destroy a Digimon with a thousand power or less. Though it must also be borne in mind your opponent never has to play a Digimon with a thousand power or less. They can play it 
and then immediately evolve it. And if they immediately evolve it, you're kind of out of luck. I mean, I mentioned Gabumon earlier. I love Gabumon. It's great. And one of the things we see, and this is a kind of a standard card game thing, Gabumon's a really good card of a really good skill. So it gets balanced by making it super weak. And that's where Poromon comes in. Certainly, if you were against, say, a Rookie Rush deck, the kind of deck that's playing lots and lots of little Digimon and not aiming to evolve them because you're giving them up. You play them, you attack the security, you know they're going down when they attack the security, but it doesn't matter because they're going to go down and you're going to take out a security card and gosh darn it, that's good enough. And you're against stuff playing things like this. It is great. And there are a bunch of 1,000 power level 3s out there. But there aren't a huge amount. So you need to be really careful. I mean, if we look at ultimate power as an example, we saw Agamon in green. And we saw Impmon in purple. And Impmon, when it gets destroyed, has got that skill that discards the top three cards of your deck. And if you're playing Impmon, you're probably going to want to do that. And that was it. In the entirety of Ultimate Power, they were the two. So what I'm saying is, yes, there will be games where this is awesome. And there will be games where this absolutely works for you. And this can be great. But this, again, is a very situational card. And I think this is going to keep happening as we see more and more Digitama in more and more sets. We are just going to see a lot of extremely metagame-dependent cards. Where you essentially have a pen, so to speak. A bullpen, like in baseball. That's it, baseball reference. Of half a dozen Digitama. And you're going to be judging the metagame when you're heading into a tournament. And that's going to decide which Digitama you go for. And that's a card game I kind of want to be involved in. I love the idea that I've got half a dozen Digitama. And on any one tournament, I'm going, right, well, this is the one or two I'm focusing on today. Because this is going to take out the matchups. Poromon is a phenomenal card in the right matchup. And a garbage card if you're not in the right matchup. So those are the new ones, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, I would be delighted to know what you think about them. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing, as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.